There are other YouTubers who have amazing boxes and set designs. Joe requested me to uh, just unbox all of this right here, right now, because a couple weeks ago, I was in New York, went to two of my favorite places, JB Prince and Corin, got a bunch of stuff, and some of it is still in the packaging that I still need to take out. So I'm gonna go through everything that I bought, why I bought it, and then why I think that it might be a valuable addition for you. Yes, there is a knife in here. We'll get to that in just a bit. Let's start with these. These are coming from JB Prince from a company called Silico. Mart. It's a Italian company and I used to use these for things like chocolate truffles or if any of you have watched the original Dish of the Day episode that I did with a pear dessert, I used one of these molds for that center of the cinnamon roll thing. And so we've been really uh, wanting to play around with different snacks that we do for different parties and I think that these will really allow us uh, to do that. I have cooked out of, which one have I cooked out of? This one and this one. Uh, recently, I made a, a lemon drizzle cake out of both of these and they have worked fantastically. This is the one that I've done uh, in the past and they are just amazing. I think they're about 12 or $13 per mold and depending on the kind of capacity that you're working with, these can actually give you a lot of bang for your buck. I don't think JB Prince or Corin has an affiliate program at this time, but regardless of the fact, I will have everything that I talk about in this video down low in the description. As far as the three sizes, I went with this small donut sized one, which I think could be super fun, sweet or savory. The half dome one, which works great because if you're making something that's gonna puff up, it has a kind of a rounded bottom and then you can slice off the top and have it be kind of a half mold. Or what we used to do for truffles is spread the ganache in, in these, unmold them after they're frozen and then pop both together and roll. Uh, which makes for kind of a perfect circle style presentation. And this one is just kind of a mini loaf mold. I had a good time uh, cutting these in three pieces after they were all baked off when I made the uh, small cakes that I made. But these could definitely be uh, like a uh, chicken liver mousse or a foie gras terrine. That's kind of like mini size that you then plate and then glaze in some sort of fashion. I think these are gonna come in handy in uh, future presentations. I should stay on the JB print side, but this one I definitely got from uh, Corin. This is a Conroe grill fan because mine has had uh, two pins in it and I was, you know, aggressively fanning my bean chotan and one of the pins broke, which then puts a lot of stress on the other pin. So I've been having a lot of uh, stress with that fan, which I love and I got like at a thrift store, but this is kind of uh, number two. This was $13.50 and I haven't even uh, taken it out of the packaging here. That's ASMR, right? Oh, it's much lighter than I thought. The thing that is different about this fan compared to the other one that I have is this has like the wood fibers or the, the thick knotted paper as, as the fibers in between here, which is lighter weight and it also will hopefully last longer than my other one did. All right, moving on. This is more stuff that makes me feel like my restaurant days aren't quite over yet. Uh, these are Winco sizzle platters. Most of you are probably familiar with these come in a range of different sizes and kind of thicknesses, but this is the one that I'm comfortable using. Uh, these, they stack really, really nice. I got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So I could effectively do, you know, either three courses kind of for more people, or I could have six courses worth of tasting menu, kind of garnish ready to go with a sea fold, another wet sea fold on top. So all my garnish is ready to go on these. I think that they, uh, they transport really well in a bag as well. And I think that because these can also go in an oven, if I'm, you know, slicing protein and need to have it rest or want to, you know, flash it really quick. These are going to be great options as opposed to me bringing half or quarter sheet trays to pop up dinners. I thought I was done with the silicone molds, but I am not. This is a request from uh, Hubert to pick these up for us to use. There is a lid that goes on top of these, but this is a silicone mold that makes quenelles, which is kind of cool. I think that depending on the texture of whatever you're working with, Hubert will be the one to test these, not me, because I'm way too romantic about making quenelles on my own. The thing that's nice about it is it is actually kind of an asymmetrical design, if you can see on that. So this tip is actually uh, slimmer than this over here. So as long as you have something that is either a mousse that will set in a way where you can unmold it from this and it's not gonna totally jank up the, the shape of it, I think that these are really gonna come in handy. And there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 of these. So if we do two, do this times two, that's enough for 24 people. I think that's uh, pretty good. This one is kind of cool. This one comes from a company called Sirteen. I got this at JB Prince. This is a fine ceramic chef's tasting and saucing spoon. And this might be one of the more expensive spoons that I've uh, purchased just here on the channel. This is a $19.90 spoon. Watch me break it as I unbox it. Yeah, really meh on the packaging. Oh, that weight is okay. Um, yeah, it seems like it's a unibody design, even though there is a little bit of a piece that 
fits in here. Can't pull that out in any way, shape, or form. I don't necessarily know how I feel about this. The bowl shape, the balance is okay. It feels kind of plasticky. I'm just gonna tell over time how this works as a, a spoon to cook with, spoon to taste with. I'm not really, let's, let's read some of the features here. Non-metallic tasting surface, steady temperature in and out of cold sauces, wipe clean non-porous surface, diamond hard ceramic features of forever luster, ergonomic handle, narrowed tip for droplet plating. We'll see what happens. I'm a spoon nerd, I had to get one. All right, I did end up picking up a couple of the small mat furs. These are like just seven bucks a piece and I really love keeping these in my bane because they're just amazing. They do discolor a little bit over time. Mat fur, if you're listening, I'd love for you to make like a gray version or colors or you know other ones that won't discolor so fast, especially if you're working with things like tomato or spices like I do pretty often. Uh, I just like to keep a lot of these on hand because they're amazing and I, I don't know. if the, Those of you that know what mat furs are like, like to cook with, they're awesome. This one is coming from Corin. This is a horse hair, horse or goat hair uh, little brush here. So I do have the ones that, it, it, they're, they're shorter bristles. They uh, won't come out so so frequently. And then you can hopefully leave these in you know a container of sauce and brush things. I have been become a fan of the brush maneuver. Oh, I don't wanna break that. I have become a fan of the brush maneuver lately because it's just a really delicate way to season things. And especially if you, I'm, I'm, I'm cooking with more pastes now and I'm making more uh, sauces that have a lot of intense flavor to it. And this is a easier way to season things rather than taking something like this and trying to spoon something over and have it all be evenly coated on a piece of food. Keeping up with the stuff that I got from Corin, this was uh, just something I wanted to try out because I do a lot of table side saucing. And a lot of times if I even have my biggest spoon that I'm using, it's not always the same experience because I have to go into the pot a certain amount of times to get a good serving on people's plates. But if I have some sort of a broth and I don't do a pour, then coming to the table with one of these is a, enough volume, hopefully, where it's an elegant presentation of me kind of ladling over as opposed to me spooning around. And those of you that have done a lot, a lot of table side presentations, you know what I'm talking about. Also from Corin here, I think this is the second to last thing from Corin. These are from my days at Lee's Frickett. We used to use these for langoustines. We would put two in the tail of the langoustine and that would give kind of a nice handle to turn as you're going over the, the charcoal because we'd put the grill grate right on top of the coals. And so I really, really miss that. I really don't like cooking with bamboo skewers that often because they burn and then they break and then if you're gonna try to present on them, they aren't all that pretty, but there's no denying that cooking with skewers is very, very valuable. And so having these around, I think is a, a, a great option. And they were just so affordable. I don't exactly remember what the price on them was, but I got, how many did I get? I got 10 of them uh, for, I wanna say less than 10 bucks, which is pretty amazing. Switching back to JB Prince. Grey Coons, interesting perforation style. Most of you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Grey Coon spoons, but this is a style that I have never seen before. I have the smaller one that has the dots in it for perforations, but this is just a really unique one. I almost, almost got the Copper Grains Grey Coon spoon, but I think I got this one instead because I thought it was a little more interesting to try out. So this is just an interesting style of spoon that I don't really have. It's just a large perforated uh, spoon and Grey Coons is pretty popular at JB Prince for those of you that have never shopped there before. Keeping up with the JB Prince things that I don't have, this is a uh, rose gold pair of tweezers. I just went with these because I, I'm almost positive I lost my gold ones. And so the rose gold ones will be nice to have. These are just pretty standard, uh, especially if you work in New York, probably there's a lot of people in your kitchen that have these tweezers. So I got a new pair. Um, these will see the light of day once I uh, either don't find my gold ones or I just decide that I wanna switch to these. All right, and the last one, the big dog, the thing that you've all hopefully been waiting for. This is a knife that I just picked up because I really wanted to just show the people at Togiharu some love. And this is a new line from Togiharu that I don't own anything from, which I think is really unique. So um, first off, seeing the size, this is a just gonna be, it's gonna be a small one because I didn't want to go too crazy at Corin because for those of you that have been uh, live stream following the podcast, I'm wanting to do a custom Ninox knife. So that is in the works. Vincent and I had a great conversation about it. So that will be uh, coming soon. This is just a really nice uh, 440 Petty from Togiharu that has a kind of wah style handle, uh, octagonal. Um, I don't exactly remember the handle material. The This knife will be linked down below on Corin's website if you wanna go show them some love because I was able to snag this during their July knife sale, 15% off all knives, which for those of you that don't know is probably the best time of year. Other than I think 
in December? Is it in November or December where they also do 15% off knives again? But yeah, this is a really nice custom fit on the Saya side. Everything comes together really well. I probably will have Dazfi do something fun to this. And yeah, it's just a really nice weight. It's just a really nice bevel. It's a nice steel. And the price was great too, which you can all check uh, for the most up-to-date prices in that link in the description. If you folks have any questions about anything that I talked about in this kind of weird New York haul of all things JB Prince and Corin, two of my favorite places in New York that I definitely recommend you check out if you're in the city, please leave them down below in the comments. I would love to get into a conversation. This is just stuff that I wanted to uh, try out and test. So over the next couple weeks, if there are favorites that I need to make a follow-up video on, I definitely will. Other than that, uh, I'm just gonna play around with all these new toys. I'm jumping in right here because if you are still here in the video, you're exactly the type of person I want to talk to about this because I'm going to be in New York next week. And with all this collaboration stuff happening with Corin, they've invited me to their event for chefs. It is on a Monday, which most industry events have in common, and I will be there. I will probably be doing some sort of a vlog thing, and I would love to meet some of you in person. So if you're in the New York area, you want to stop by Corin and support them and what they do for the chef community, I would love to see you there. Links are down low in the description description for that. None of this was, of course, final when we filmed this video, so I wanted to quickly just jump in and give you that update. Okay, back to the video. If you want a better way to get in touch with me when I am traveling, either giving me recommendations or just find out where I'm at and what I'm up to, Instagram is probably the best place to do that. I did just unlock the YouTube stories feature. I haven't really played around with it yet. As I go to more and more cities, I want to kind of keep up with that a little bit more so you folks know where I'm at. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Justin Kana. We've got it all up on the screen right now. If you like videos like this, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe down below. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Justin Kana. Have a good one.